Over time, Uganda's livestock sector has made strides with innovations such as introduction of pure breeds, artificial insemination, and in vivo fertilization. However, these methods did not yield the desired results as animals struggled to adapt to the environment, affecting their productivity. But the disappointment was that these animals took long to adapt. Some of them died and those which survived actually survived to be like our local animals. They had to compromise on their productivity in order to be able to survive. So you find a, a, a Frisian uh, giving you uh, two liters of milk, which is uh, below what uh, the farmers and the government anticipates. The challenges with the previous methods prompted researchers at the National Livestock Resources Research Institute to explore in vitro fertilization. This technology is now being used effectively at the institute. So we go into the animal and we pick those eggs when they are still asleep. These eggs are called immature eggs. And we bring them into the lab here. Uh, we, ta we take them through a process, as I will discuss, and we form embryos. The beauty with this technology is that I can get this one egg and I give it to one animal. I, I mean, I give it to one bull. Then I get this other egg, I give it to another bull. I get this one egg, I give it to another bull. So I can test three bulls or five bulls on one animal. Dr. Kasule explains that 10 eggs are harvested from a highly performing cow every two weeks and fertilized with sperm from a superior bull. This process results in approximately 100 embryos annually, leading to rapid genetic multiplication. Here I'm focusing on the exotic animals. But what about our local animals? The president says that he has animals that can give you 10 liters of milk, even 18 liters of milk, and call it. But this animal will appear once in a generation. What do we do with that animal when we have seen it? We multiply it rapidly. Instead of giving it 13 years, and in these 13 years it is giving us one cup, and a total of 13, of which only two will take its, its good milk production genes, it's better we multiply this animal, maybe in a period of five years we can get 600 cows. And if of the 600, it is 100 that can give us what we want. That is a good bargain for us. Ovum pickup is a delicate and safe procedure that uses a fine needle to gently extract follicles from a cow. The embryos created through this method are either transferred to low-performing surrogate cows or stored in embryo tanks with liquid nitrogen support. When I have my needle here, I can be able to, one, see what is there and then direct my needle to go into where the, to go into where the, the egg is and then I suck it out. So when I get the, uh, this other hand, will go through the rectum of the animal, while this gun will go through the vagina of the animal. So in there, I will get this one, I pull the ovary and I put it here, and then I can see what is happening on this, because this probe is already connected here. So I can direct my needle to go here, then I suck. I send it there, then I suck. The surrogate cow passes on antibodies to the embryo, helping it fight diseases once born. The resulting calf inherits genes from three parents, producing a highly desirable breed. It's the, the last three months, the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth month. The, it is during that period that the mother now starts passing on its antibodies onto this calf. But also the temperature tolerance of, of the mother, because this, uh, the, the, you have an elevated temperature inside there, the calf will also be adapted, it will be exposed to these slightly higher temperatures and it will grow up with uh, traits to adapt more to the elevated temperatures as compared to a calf which was just brought. So it will not be shocked. So what we are looking at is this calf getting antibodies to fight against diseases at a younger age when it is still within the safety of the, the, the surrogate mother's womb. The Minister of State for Agriculture in charge of animal industry retired Colonel Bright Ramirama highlighted the timely nature of this technology and expressed government support for the sector. He urged farmers, especially those in the cattle corridors, to embrace this innovative approach. The, the offsprings have the resistance 
of the surrogate mother, but have got the attributes of the parents, that is the bull and the mother. So that's the beauty of embryo transfer, and we have found it easy because normally when we bring breeds here because of climate and conditions here, we get high mortality rates. We, we are encouraging our farmers, especially breeders, uh, instead of uh, using semen, uh, sometimes in, instead of using uh, uh, bulls to use embryo transfer and sex semen, because we get quick results and uh, it is sustainable. Mary Namkose, UBC News.